Well, honestly, there's not really a feeling to having this disease. It's more like, you know, you have limitations, and as time, and as time, as, as your life goes on, you kind of learn your limitations, such as, you know, lifting your arms above your head, I can't do that. Smiling, that's all you get. Uh, facial expressions, not so much. Uh, there's not really more pain, necessarily, more than the pain that I had after my surgery, which was not fun. But, uh, yeah, so there's not uh, really a feel. Well, that depends. Sometimes getting out of bed is a struggle. Uh, other times it's just general things. Like I can't, you know, really get my arm above my head without, you know, kind of have to throw it, you know, that kind of thing. I can't hold it up there once I get it up there. You know, just, you know, and simple movement options is wrong with that. You know, nothing wrong with my driving. And some people beg to differ, but you know, there's nothing really wrong there. You know, it's just general movement functions, like you know, balance, that kind of thing. My particular form of muscular dystrophy is FSHND. It uh, stands for fasciotoscapular humeral muscular dystrophy. Uh, facial muscles, you know, I don't really have any facial muscles, no facial expressions, but you, you kind of know what I'm talking about from the eyes, I've been told. Uh, scapulo is just basically my. Uh, Shoulder blades in the back kind of protrude a little bit, and you know, it's just, it just makes it a little hard, but it, it helps to compensate. Uh, humeral is just, I understand it as basic movement issues. Uh, basically, what my form of the disease does is when you're younger, uh, it might not present itself. Uh, mine did when it was like when I was 10 or 11, like I said earlier, but uh, my dad's didn't present until he was 17, 18 years old. Uh, so, there are, and there are several different forms of ND. Mine is not life-threatening, uh, but others like Duchenne, um, trying to think of any other form. Duchenne is the number one killer. Um, it'll get you when you're 15, 16 years old, sometimes younger. It's, it's terrible. And I, people have confused it with MS in the past. It's not exactly MS, but it is in the same family in terms of genetic category. In that respect, I'm blessed. I really got lucky to get the mildest form of MD, and honestly, I find it as an opportunity to help people, you know, understand that, you know, hey, we are, in a sense, handicapped, but we can still do stuff. Like, I play golf. Uh, I don't recommend that you play golf unless you have a very, very high tolerance for patients. I do get pissed at the braces quite often, actually. Uh, <laughs> athlete's foot, awful. Uh, sometimes the braces don't fit, that's awful. Sometimes the braces break in completely inconvenient places. Like, I was walking back from PE one time and I got midway across the parking lot and one of the joints snapped on my right brace and I had to limp back into the classroom without a shoe on and had to get my grandmother to bring me my other brace, which happened to be covered in some substance that I'm still not sure what it was because it had been in the back of my car. But uh, yeah, I do get mad at the orthotics. I really do. Uh, well, honestly, just don't think that because I have MD I can't do anything. That's the one thing that I see more than everything is people constantly wanting to help me. And I'm not trying to knock anybody. The help is appreciated, but I'm not helpless either. And honestly, the more that I do, the stronger I'm going to get and the stronger I'm going to stay. So, you know, just don't think that we're worthless because we're I'm handicapped, I guess. I've been diagnosed since, uh, I think my parents knew at my birth, but I wasn't really kind of brought into the loop until I was 10 or 11. They kind of sheltered me from it because they didn't want me to use it as an excuse in my younger years. And then as it became more prevalent, they kind of told me that, you know, hey, you're not able to do everything. I can't say that it's really changed anything because I don't know what life would be without it. Honestly, I don't know. So, uh, I really can't answer your question. Uh, the restriction, the main restriction that is that over time I'll be losing possibly more and more of my motor functions. So wheelchair, maybe. Uh, ventilator, maybe. It's just a bunch of maybes. Right? I don't really know. You know, I've like a couple years. Uh, well, it is a genetic disease, so yes and no. Uh, 
more dominantly in my family it goes to the males and I don't know if that's a genetic thing with the disease itself or if it's something else but uh, more normally in my family the women don't have it so if I have girls we should be good and if we have guys then we deal with that when it comes. Will it lead to? Uh, eventually it'll lead to probably me being you know having to walk with some kind of assistance like a cane or something but you know, if I, if I stay in shape and I keep working out and I keep eating right, then I should be pretty much the same as I am now. Hopefully. Balance. You know, I walk into a room, a crowded, a crowded room with people, and it's just like, you know, one person bumps into me and I'm gone. You know, and we're all going with me. So, it's just, there's not really one specific thing that's hard to do. It's just kind of like, uh, first of all, stop staring. We're human. We just have to be blessed with something that you don't have. Uh, I don't really know of anything that I could say that would help people understand more than the black things around my legs. Yes, I do have legs under them, I promise. Uh, they just help me walk. We're as normal as anybody else, it's just sometimes we have you know, difficulty. I think the being tall came from my family because most of my family is over six feet tall. Uh, I don't know if that helped it. I don't know if that hurt it. I, I really couldn't tell you. Uh, tall, dark, and goofy. That's what they call me. So, uh, yeah, it's it's hard to. It really is. But you don't like to do it. But you know, if you can't do it, you can't do it. That's one of the main things is voicing, you know, whether you can or whether you can't. Don't overexert yourself. I'm supposed to be checking into the MD clinic once every six months, I think. Six months to a year. Uh, I haven't because basically they put you in a room. Two by two maybe fit you, your parents, sometimes your little sister, and then three other doctors to make you do this. Hold it as long as possible touch your nose, that kind of thing. It's just not worth my time because this disease is highly experimental. They don't know much about it at all. Uh, some forms they know more about than others. It's just kind of a test and go thing. Now when I had my surgery, I went to the doctor a lot more. You know, basically just to see, you know, how the foot went, how the tendon transfer went, and that kind of thing. Strangers in the night Exchanging glances Wandering in the night What were the chances We'd be sharing love Before the night was through We'd be sharing love Before the night was through